to find you can't listen to it. I can't really work and listen to people talking, but sometimes I try and listen to music to get to a different state of mind, to unlock something or to free my mind a little bit. So I do sometimes put on music and with a blank piece of paper just see what happens. I mean, you won the Turner Prize in 2004, and, and I wonder how important that was in allowing you to let your imagination fly. Well, winning prizes is quite important in our society. People really put a lot of store by it. So it's good to win prizes. It's even good to be nominated for the Turner Prize, and it's something that will always be mentioned because I'll always be asked about it, like here. So, which is good because my work relies upon working with other people and people wanting to meet me or doors being opened and actually winning that prize the most important thing about winning that prize doors were opened because of it and people maybe had confidence that oh i'm working with this guy he's won the turner prize so it's going to be okay you were anointed effectively but are you also suspicious of it of the anointing of course because as soon as you know, you know it's the classic thing isn't it as soon as i won it i started getting invited to art things i'd never knew even existed now i just think i need to be invited to things because otherwise maybe i'll stop being visible because of where i am and my age and all those things it's quite strange actually how you can feel insecure even though you have this huge profile in many ways your art it's not so much about you but creating an event bringing people together to take part in something let's talk a little bit about stonehenge next and yes. the project called sacrilege well that was an example of that it was a, an inflatable scale model of stonehenge which you could bounce on and it was made during the olympic year and i did it for a number of reasons one of which was basically for people to enjoy our shared history in that structure and to be able to go on it and bounce on it and enjoy it and have fun on it it's funny it's absurd it's stupid so did the druids take part well weirdly i was very worried about the druids <laughs> because I just thought they are going to be so angry about this and I called it sacrilege so I got the criticism in with the name I just thought I should call it that because someone's going to tell me it's sacrilege and I'm going to say yes it is I took that title from an album a remix of Can so it came from a music source but I actually thought Druids would turn up with like huge swords and try and just slash it I'm a very pessimistic person clearly and they loved it did they bounce on it? They did. And they, <laughs> then they asked, could we have it for our druid get-together in a forest the following year? And I would have loved for them to have had it, but technically it wasn't possible because you needed so much space around it. When they saw it especially, it's difficult not to like when you see it, when you see young people, children, grown-ups, grandparents, bouncing around Stonehenge and enjoying it, and there's nothing really bad about it. Vaughan Williams next. Yes. What brought you to this? Well, this is related, actually, because I was making a film about a British artist called Bruce Lacey, who had this incredible career from the 1950s to the 2000s, predicting history, in a sense, and social change. And he had a very intense moment where he did a, a number of rituals with his wife then, Jill, around stone circles. Not Stonehenge, but a lot of lesser-known ones. They're kind of made up, effectively, like rituals often are, but they're very intense and very profound and I needed music that was very intense, very English, mysterious and spectral almost, which I think this music is. 